In this video, we're going to discuss removing objects from your videos using Mask inside of Premiere Pro. Hey folks, what's going on? I am Matt Pruitt. Hope you're doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. Today's video, I wanted to show you a trick to get rid of certain objects inside of your videos. Now, why would you want to do this? I do a lot of stock photography and stock videos, and a lot of times there are certain objects and logos and things like that that end up in my footage, and I can't have that in there as far as stock photography and stock video. So I had to figure out a way to remove those different objects or logos or symbols or things like that that show up in that footage. And if you're using Premiere Pro, it's pretty easy to do with the mask tool. So I'm going to walk you through setting up a mask inside of Premiere Pro and just getting rid of little logos and things like that in some of your stock footage. So let's go ahead and hop into Premiere Pro. Okay, I'm in Premiere Pro and I have a sequence ready to go and I'm running an HD sequence. So this is just 1080p. And here's a little bit of my drone footage. I'm just gonna drag it on over to my timeline. It's shot in 4K, but I'm gonna scale it down to 1080p. So I'm just gonna hit scale over here and mark it down to 50% instead of 100%. Okay, so as I'm playing through this footage, you'll see in the background, there's this AT&T logo. Well, that's the AT&T building, but I don't necessarily need that logo to show up in the shot. It's a little bit distracting. So we're going to figure out a way to remove that just by doing a mask. So let's go ahead and scrub back to a nice starting point on the footage. Uh, let's see, we'll start right about here. Trim it back some. All right. And then we'll start the track. And we'll make this our out point right here. So we can just go ahead and trim it to there. Beautiful. All right, so now we have this set up for our perfect duration. Uh, looks like it's about seven seconds long. That might be a little short, but for this video, we'll just keep it short. Okay, so first thing you want to do is duplicate your video layer and you can do that simply by holding down the alt key on your keyboard and dragging up. I think it's option on a Mac. And that way you can duplicate it right there within your timeline. After you duplicate it, you want to go ahead and create your mask. So select your top video layer and then head on over to the effects and controls panel. And you can use one of these masking tools here. You have an ellipse, a rectangular, square, polygonal, whatever you want to call that, and the pen tool. A lot of times I'll use the pen tool because you need, I'll have to be a little more precise with how I'm going to mask things. But in this instance, a rectangle mask will be just fine because we're dealing with a rectangular building. So let's move this mask on the screen over that logo. Go ahead and resize it to fit your particular scene like so like so okay so what i'm going to do is add a feather to this mask just a little bit so we'll say maybe 14 on the feather that way the mask sort of blends in a little bit better into the scene and it's not totally obvious that we went in and pulled something out of the video all right, so now that we have our mask applied, we need to make sure that this mask tracks and moves along with the video. Because if I just scrub through the footage, the mask is not necessarily covering the logo. We need to use the tracking tool that's built into Premiere Pro. Here's a quick warning and disclaimer. If you don't have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM on your computer, I do not recommend using the motion tracking feature it will choke your computer. For the sake of this video, 
I'm going to show you how to use this this tracking tool, but I will speed through with the um, final product because it, it might take a little bit of time depending on your footage, depending on effects and things like that that you may already have in place. Okay, so now I have my mask on my logo and then you click on mask path and you'll see that you have a couple buttons here to play forward, play backwards, so on and so forth. Just click the play button and your footage is gonna start scrubbing and the mask is gonna to try to track the object right there inside of the video. Now, this is tracking along and the building is getting a little bit closer to the camera and the track looks fairly good, but I need to stop it. So I'm gonna hit stop because it looks like the mask is starting to creep over to the edge of the logo. So I'm just gonna resize it a little bit right here. Okay. And then I'll just hit play again for the tracking. If you notice right here, it started to create some keyframes for you. Okay. And that's all it's doing is creating these keyframes as part of the tracking process. So it knows where to place the mask during playback. So let's continue tracking. And again, it's still creeping over the edge a little bit. That's okay. We just stop it and fix the size. And it's totally okay doing this. It's gonna keep up with it as you play it back. All because it has these little keyframes. Okay, so we have successfully tracked the object on the building. Okay, so next step is to actually get rid of it. And what you need to do is select the inversion option on your mask. Okay, and then click down on the bottom layer of your video tracks here. And then you can just move the positioning. So what I wanna do is try to get this color to, to fill in where the logo is. So I'll just move the video layer up or down. So if I move it down, that brings in the clouds. If I move it up, that takes it away. And then when I try to play it back, because I had that mass there being tracked, we don't see anything there other than the rest of the building. And of course, when you're done, you can go ahead and do all of your color grading and, and, and add your different effects and things like that if you want to, and just export it out and you should be good to go. So here's what it looked like originally. And this is what it looks like now with the mask applied. Pretty slick. All right, so that's how you use Premiere Pro to remove objects inside of your video. Now granted, this is gonna be a lot easier when you're dealing with static items such as buildings and walls and things like that. You can also use the same technique for logos on a shirt, but it's a lot easier if you have a lot of real estate to work with to pull in and correct the mask. And if the people that, or objects that you're dealing with isn't really moving a whole lot on the screen because you're gonna be tracking that spot and the less movement you have, the easier it is to track it. And again, remember to have about 16 gigabytes of RAM on your system and your system won't just throw up all over you when you're trying to track some stuff. <laughs> okay, that's it. I appreciate you folks watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like, share, and subscribe buttons so this content can go out to other beginner content creators and hopefully it'll help them out. Also, Stay tuned for next week's and the coming week's videos as I'm going to start a new tutorial series in the world of After Effects. I've already shared a little bit of this information with my Patreon members. And um, if you want to see some of the sneak peek stuff that was shared with them, feel free to sign up on my Patreon. Just go to antpruitt.com slash Patreon or just click the link in the bio. If you have any other questions or ideas for videos, you can also leave a comment below with that. I appreciate all the support. Appreciate all the love. All right, folks, have yourselves a good day. Let's get out there and create and dominate. Take care.